Right, the ID buzz modification starts. So ID buzz modification video number one. So what we're going to cover in this video is, first of all, you'll see the bumper is off here. So we're going to show you what we've done with the bumper. Uh, it went over to Paintworks, they did some bits for us, got some time lapses of that. The observant among you will realise that the badge is now matte black, which Steve also did at Paintworks for us. And suspension is on its way. So the suspension, I'm hoping, will arrive in the next hour or so. Our friend Stefan over in Germany went straight into the H&R factory and got us a set of lowering springs. So this is kind of phase one for us. H&R springs, we've got our own IBAC springs on development, which will be lower than that. Coilovers are in development, air suspension is in development, but we're doing it in stages. Stage one is the H&R springs just to get it a little bit lower initially so we can start using it. The next up is audio. We're going to cover that in this episode. So um, actually, the audio in this isn't bad. If you saw the first video on um, my drive back, I was quite impressed with it, but I'm used to uh, a better audio. My T611's got a full Alpine audio kit in it with subs and amps and everything. So Mitch over there is going to start. He started stripping this. All the audio is in the back, which we've got from Alpine. We'll run you through what we're doing. Well, Mitch will run you through what he's doing, the audio that's going to go in this, and then show you some footage of it going in. So hopefully by the end of this video, this will be lowered, all new bumpers on, and a decent audio setup in it. So I'll hand you over to Mitch now and he'll get working. So first phase of the video done, Mitch has put the suspension on. So these are H&R, what do they work, calculate out to about 30 mil around? Yeah, so 30 mil, so not enough, but it'll be a start. I'm hoping by the end of this video, we may have the wheels to go on it. Rotoform have supplied us the wheels, but we've had to change the ETs on them. So they've sent off to be machined. May or may not be on by the end of the video, but you probably saw Mitch fit in the grill. So what we've done at the front here, blacked out the badge, as I mentioned earlier, we've changed this lower grill and we've kind of flipped the image. It was all, yellow with black behind i've seen other people do all black and it just like a big open gaping mouth so we decided to flip it sent all this off to steve and steve very kindly painted those so he's painted this bit gloss black and then here this texture bit he's painted the yellow to flip it which is similar to how it kind of looks on some of the golfs and stuff but it just breaks it up so it's just not all one big solid black line so this is the h r kit which we will offer so this is 30 mil lower and then we're working on an ibac kit which is lower and then the coilover kit which is lower than that and then air suspension so i'm gonna run you through the audio in a minute and show you what we're doing off the back of the journey home and the sound not being quite right we're not being really good enough i spoke to mitch at alpine and he sorted us out with all this so mitch has stripped it looks a sorry state isn't it i hate it when you see something like this but in stripping it mitch has discovered all of this space here so mitch yes this looks like a really good space for us to install a lot of the air stuff. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts are, where are you thinking of putting stuff? Right, so for for audio size, we'll start with first. I'm thinking the subwoofer is going to go in this area, but on the other side, um, just means that it, the seat, the back seats do sit on it, these mounts here. So, you know, it's nice and covered out of the way, and then your feet are about here. So, obviously, you don't really want it in that space. So, my plan is subwoofer will go this side. The amplifier is going to go the front section in this void here doesn't really need to be accessed very often so it's fine being under your, your carpet and there's still plenty of space to allow for you know heat dissipation on the amplifier uh, and then moving on to the air suspension that we're eventually going to do i'm going to put the compressors on these rails here uh, providing they obviously fit we'll check that first and then under the driver's seat there's also a void of space so i'm thinking the management's going to go here just so it's nicely accessible if we ever need to get any fuses to, you know if we Need to disconnect the system for any reason. We've got access just via under the seat, which there's actually a little access patch just here, and then the tank will go somewhere towards the back of the vehicle. And you'll be able to run all the wiring and the and yeah, the lines so and everything. All factory wiring is in this channel here. You can just about see it from this front here. So by removing this panel, I can run anything I need down this channel to the back, including the airlines, and that'll be nice and out of the way. So that's definitely a future video because we're yep. not doing air suspension yet, but it's inevitable it will come. But it's nice to know that, that space is there. Moving on to audio. So 
that sub box Mitch spoke about earlier on, Mitch has done all the dimensions and sent it across to Sunhill, who's done a few bits for us in the past. So Sunhill is going to be making us a sub box for the sub. So where are we? Eight inches, yeah, which will go nicely in that space. So the sub, not that you'll see it because the seat will be there, but the sub will just be exposed, just popping out the carpet, but nice space for it to go in. So this is all the stuff that Mitch has sent us from Alpine. Go down here and Mitch will explain what's going where and what okay. we've got. So we've got the three-way front end uh, that we were going to be fitting, so three speakers, they'll be running via a crossover in a passive format. And then I've basically 3D printed various adapters for each speaker size for its relevant location. The rear sliding doors are a two-way, so they actually use the same speakers here, and then we just lose the, the mid-range from the three-way kit. The channel amplifier, uh, which is going to go, as we spoke, under the floor, and then get it all wired up. So how long we reckon? How long? Couple of days. Well, Couple of days. <laughs> Looking forward to hearing it. Yeah, it's definitely. And hopefully we'll have some wheels by then. But we shall see. If not, the wheels can come in another episode. So anyway, I'm going to hand you back over to Mitch now. He's going to film as much as he can without making it too boring and him spending hours and hours watching wiring because two or three days of watching somebody yeah, wire a van up isn't fun. <laughs> but we'll time lapse as much as we can, give you an idea on certain areas where we put things and then come back and check on the results. So over to Mitch. Right, so we're up against it time a bit here because I'm rushing to do lots of other things. So Jack and Mikey are very kindly giving it a good clean for me. Then Mikey's gonna go and take it off to our good friends, Andy Kelly at Science and Graphics UK that have done lots of stuff for us before. They did the sign writing on the Navis preface, if you've seen this, and, and a bunch of stuff done PPF for us on several of the vans. So anyway, that's, this is going off there now for them to wrap the top half in grey. So just a quick, quick recap of what's done so far. So it's lowered on the h springs, Steve's painted the grills, Mitch has done the audio, next up is the wrap, and then I think we'll call it a day on this episode, but we'll show you at the end what's coming in the next episode. We've got a bunch of other stuff that's arrived for this ready to go on. As soon as it's clean, Jack and Mike are gonna jump in, take this over to Andy Kelly, we'll get those guys to film them wrapping the roof, and then we'll just do a recap when we get back. Right, so as Andy said, we're coming over to Signs and Graphics over in Hinkley. Andy and his guys are gonna be wrapping the top of the van. You might have seen Andy's van in the past if you're into transporters we'd like to help anyone out that's got a transporter or it's in the transporter world because they've obviously helped us out over the years we've dropped it off and it's about four o'clock half four these guys reckon it'll be done for this time tomorrow so i thought it was going to be longer so i'm pretty surprised about that so i'll let them get on with it i don't want to keep them any longer because i think they've just had enough of had enough of those guys just lingering around here so there we go next up you'll probably be seeing the wrapping take place so over to these guys. So that's stage one complete. So suspension, H&R Lawrence brings, Steve's done the grill for us, Mitch has done the audio and the soundproof, and the soundproof has made a massive difference, actually more than you would notice in a transporter. I think because these things are so quiet, because there's no combustion engine, you're more aware of the road noise and the tyre noise. He soundproofed this thing to death, probably some would say too much, but it's definitely made a difference. It's made it even quieter inside there, which I've got really used to and really enjoying it. Andy Kelly and his team have done a lovely job of the wrap. I was in two minds about this. I knew that I thought it was too yellow. I'd considered a full wrap but I actually do like the yellow. I'd seen the yellow GTIs and stuff around and thought they look really good. And actually, if you look at the very early, I stumbled across this after I decided to do it, the very earlier marketing material they did for this years ago when they were talking about launching it, it was a color like this. It was the yellow over gray. I decided to not do what everybody else does and the original ones do and do the full bonnet drop with a wrap. I wanted to just stick with the top side and I love it. We're still seeing lots of people hate on these and I get it. You post a picture of them and people like just can't get their head around them. I think partly because of the price of them and just people, a lot of people are avoiding the electronic technology and they don't think it's the way to go. They don't think it's the future. Maybe they're right. You know, hydrogen probably will be a better solution in the future, but for now, electric's here and it's here to stay. And this thing is an absolute pleasure to drive. The more I drive it, the more I use it, the more I like it, the more I enjoy it. We're very privileged here that we get to have things like this for research and development and get to use them in the development process. Episode two, so I'm going to pause this here because there's so much we want to do to this. Episode two will be coming out soon. So what we're working on the next episode, we have air suspension for this, which is something I've been itching to do, but we've held off to do it just yet because we're waiting for the wheels. So we've got two different versions of Navis split wheels coming for it. No, sorry, one split and one, one piece forged that we have for these. I won't show you the design just yet because I'm super impressed with it, but... Um, 
we've kind of carried on the theme of the diamonds that you see in the wheels on this to kind of keep it looking OEM plus. Where are we going from there? We've got so suspension, wheels, seats. There we go. Seats are being fully retrimmed. I like the seats in these, but the pale colour is just too pale for me. It's been used a couple of times and my eldest, no, my youngest son, doing his shoelaces on the seats, which I know he shouldn't do, but the, the pale colours, they just stain and they mark easy. So we're going to change all the seats internally for a darker colour. And body kit styling. So we've got quite a few options starting to appear for the body kit. We've been working on one with a factory. We've had the sample sent through and I actually really like them. Rear spoiler. I'm not sure how far we'll go on this actually. We won't know until we've got it lowered on air to how low we can go with the additional bits. But we've got rear spoiler coming, really like that. This side skirts, there's a rear lip and there's a lower front spoiler as well. We'll show you all of those in the next episode. Which ones we decide to keep on this and fit on this, we'll see. I've actually made some tweaks to the front lip spoiler. I wasn't quite pleased with that. I thought it protruded a bit too much so that's gone back to the factory for them to make a few changes but once episode one's finished now episode two comes it will be a complete transformation again so much more to do so many more parts being worked on these behind the scenes flush sliding windows as we mentioned before yeah so much going on so if you're interested in id buzz or you know anybody that's thinking about getting an id buzz please do share this video with them even if you just follow the volkswagen scene and you're interested in it and not necessarily in the id buzz this is kind of evolution if you like in what i think we'll start to see in lots of other the lots of other volkswagen applications and what we'll potentially see and what replaces the t6.1 with an electric vehicle will be inspired so much by this i'm going to do a video sh soon in the next couple of weeks on five things i hate about the id bus i don't hate a lot about it but there are five things that i've really picked up on that i dislike and and also some things that we've learned in the way to improve that or to take away the things i hate so we don't hate those five things but yeah, please do press that like button. It means a lot to us. It helps YouTube decide to show it to more people. Subscribe to the channel. Ring that little bell to get notifications when more videos are coming out. And as always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.